So honestly, I've like 3D printed a lot of stuff. So when the Creality people sent me the Ender 3 v3, SE. I'm like, I don't really know what to do with this. So I was trying to come up with an idea to make a video. And I, I really struggled to do that for a while. But then I came up with something that I think is pretty cool. You know, those like ships that are inside of bottles where they like make them with tweezers because you couldn't pass the material through a bottle. Well, that's the kind of thing that I think I could 3D print. More specifically, I'm going to make like a sphere inside a cube, which to be honest, I did try to print before narrating this and it, it didn't turn out. I couldn't remove the supports and oh well. But if you continue watching this video, I'm going to show you how to make this thing kind of like in a fake way where we're going to glue components together, but it's simple and the printer does it. So let's do it. Modeling could not be simpler. I'm going to use an icosphere as kind of the base model. And because we're 3D printing this, I think it's good to kind of have this like on its like flat side in some sense. We go into edit mode, hit I twice for insetting, and then Alt E to extrude along normal. So this is how I'm making the complicated looking piece. By the way, to make it, I guess, structurally stronger and look cooler. Control B to bevel a few times. And then I can select more, select the boundary loop, which will select the edges that I want and then control B again to bevel. Okay, so that's actually most of it. Now I need a cube container that is smaller than it, but it still fits somehow. Here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start with a cube. I need to reposition it so it's in the right spot at least for visual reference. And just like last time, I'm going to hit I twice to inset and then make it thick enough so that I can delete it and then give it thickness with a solidify modifier. So something like that, add thickness. If it's looking weird, play around with that even thickness um, attribute. So maybe something like this. And I wanna make sure that, yeah, I don't think that would be able to pass through. Yeah, we should be good. Okay, so this is like the modeling. However, when I tried to print it like this again, I ran into issues. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna split it into two components. So I'm literally gonna cut this cube thing in half. And hopefully if I apply solidify, those loop cuts will go through. Okay, they did go through, perfect. I can take the top part of this and just delete it because I'm just going to duplicate it in a second and make sure that this has a, um, it's not hollow is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to do some edge selections, F to fill. And in theory, if I just take this and make a copy of it, they will fit together, obviously. Now that I'm thinking about it, this might cause an issue as well. Uh, because like there's some overhang right here. So it's going to need to make these supports. And I've had traumatic, I mean, that that's extreme. I've had an ideal scenarios, let's say that with um, supports. So I'm gonna avoid that. I'm actually gonna cut this. I'm gonna cut this in half as well, which I just thought of now. Because that's not as simple to model, I'm going to use a Boolean for this. So I'm just gonna drag this until it feels like it's roughly in the middle. Doesn't have to be exact. And then we apply a Boolean where we take the difference from this cube, which will get rid of that, perfect. And then I'm going to make a duplicate where we can hide the first one such that this one will be the intersection. Yeah, that's the inverse. So I'm thinking I apply that, I apply that, I get rid of this. And if I view it, yeah, now we have two components where I can put one here and then flip this by 180 degrees. And I don't really know if it's that important that they're all level, but I have this paranoia. I have this fear that it is important. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. So I'm going to take everything, Control J to join it. And now let's uh, center this object or origin to geometry, location zero. And then I wanna think about how big this should be. Should it be five meters wide? I'm gonna go with no. So for the units, we are gonna go with imperial cause my brain thinks in inches. And for inches, I want this to be like, I don't know, two, three inches on the longest side. So I'm just going to scale this up. By the way, maybe we wanna move the uh, cursor to the world origin. And the reason I'm doing that is then I can set the origin of this to the 3D cursor. So now the origin's down here, meaning when I scale this down and now stays on the floor is basically the idea. And uh, usually these kinds of softwares like STL. So I'm going to export this as an STL export and Creality, which again is the printer that I'm using has their own uh, dedicated software. And by the way, this is me editing the video that you're watching right now. So using this software isn't a big deal, right? You just open file to import. Don't worry about that. 
and I'm going to import in segmented the STL file and then resize it so it looks like this. It's a right kind of click on the mouse kind of navigation program. So I'm going to do that. And then the question is, do we need any support? You go to support, you click automatic support, and there is a tiny bit of support, but to be honest, these pieces don't really make sense. So I'm gonna clear all support and just kind of hope that it doesn't need it, right? Th this is a strategy. So uh, this is the printer I'm using uh, for this uh, video. I'm using PLA at 1.75, whatever that is, thickness, diameter, whatever. I'm going to do this at normal quality, or maybe I could do it even faster at like going at 0.25 let's see so we have our layer height can i bump this up to 0.3 for a faster print let's see yep it does not seem to care so <laughs> fine with me uh okay let's uh, slice this thing which uh, basically what that does is it gives if you haven't 3d printed before whatever printer you're using it basically gives instructions for how this is going to print you can see it's going up the uh, z-axis and the interesting thing is if something is kind of like a big component where you don't necessarily want to print the entire inside uh, so you're going to see this kind of cobweb honeycomb grid looking thing uh, which is a good thing and you can control that like structurally how supported it is i don't know uh, i want to export this to local because this printer uh, uses an SD card. So let me get that one second. So here's the SD card that comes with it. And I have my own little like SD card to USB converter. Basically, we are going to export this uh, locally and then just move it to the printer. Export to local. And we want this to be on our drive. So I'm going to, that is a horrible name. I'm going to call this segmented, I think. We're happy with that. So it's exported. Let's just make sure. Okay, we have our segmented G code, and then let's just try uh, moving this over. And I'll try to get a time lapse or something for you. It turns out that I do not have uh, glue or super glue or anything like that. And I did try to go to the supermarket. I put in an effort. They didn't have any kind of glue either. So that's the point where I give up. And instead of glue, we're going to do the next best thing. Tape. <laughs> it's like a circle like that. I don't have much faith in this idea. Let's try. Oh, you know what? Not bad, actually. Okay, 3D printing isn't always about the beauty. Sometimes it's about the jank. And I'm here to embrace that jank. Okay. So there you have it, a ball. <laughs> Maybe it's not the prettiest but a ball inside a cage that couldn't have been, I don't know, like the objects couldn't have been passed through each other. Technically, this is like possible to 3D print in like one go, like using supports, but that that was a lot of like removal and I'd like break the model. So thank you for watching my video. <laughs> and if it wasn't obvious already, I assume it was obvious. This video is sponsored by Creality in the sense that they sent me the printer for free, I could have said whatever the fuck I wanted about it. So that was an honest video in a sense. And I know there's a lot of 3D printer videos I'm making. It's cause it's Black Friday and that's when all the companies start sending stuff. So do I have a choice in the matter? I mean, I guess so.